You are watching Business Heroine TV for the entrepreneur who says she will and does. Join the Business Heroine community today at businessheroinemagazine.com. And now, tune into the show. Welcome. I'm Ann Perry, founder of Business Heroine, and I'm so excited for you to meet our beautiful September cover heroine today, Marcy Morrow. Hi, Marcy. Hi. <laughs> so Marcy is a transformation catalyst, mindset expert, and high heel wearing spiritual fireball, um, helping those who dare to admit that they want more in success, love, and everything in between. Her sweet spot is working with women who have commitment issues to what they really want because they feel on top of the world one minute and knee deep in doubt the next. So no matter the entry problem, the solution is always the same. Go inward. Marcy believes that the key to living your vision is working with the resistant parts of you that aren't yet on board. And it's not her formal degrees in psychology and relationships or her decade of professional experience in personal development that make Marcy amazingly talented. It's overcoming never feeling enough by building a relationship with her red hot soul. She'll teach you how you can do the same through life changing soul connecting experiences if you're ready to start taking risks that actually matter. Welcome Marcy, it's so great to have you. Hi, it's so great to be here. Thank you so much, Anne. I'm really excited. Yes, and Marcy, if you didn't know, has been crowned the next rising business heroine. So <laughs> at Business Heroine, we have, it's basically a web reality show, kind of like a, an interactive reality show. We thought, okay, there's America's Next Top Model, there's Top Chef, there's Project Runway, what about the emerging entrepreneurs who are inventing really cool businesses, just taking their dreams, putting them out in the world? And so we created Next Rising Business Heroine, and Marcy was our winner. So here we are talking with you and featuring you on the magazine, and it's so exciting to, to have this conversation now. Yeah, thank you so much. I remember getting, you know, all of the promotions and the emails leading up to Next Rising Business Hero. And I, you know, I love games and reality and all that, the reality shows and all that. So when I saw that, I was like, oh, that's so cool. And I sat on, you know, all the emails for like weeks, watch them go by. And then the last night you're like, I got one. I felt you were speaking right to me. You're like, it's not too late. Just fill, you know, just, just join in. And I was like, okay, I'm going to do this. And, um, and then I almost fell out of my chair when out of like the hundreds of people that had, you know, applied for this and all that, you said you said it was me. And I was like, oh, my God, she actually got my responses. And it, that just felt really, really cool. Yeah, well, you're that's so amazing. It's like last minute and you just got in the game and then look what happened. Like what an awesome business nugget. What an awesome takeaway. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And yeah, and you you totally, I mean, there were so many amazing women in the competition. It was, it was really hard to pick. And it's like, yeah. you know, the beauty of it, though, is going through the reality show you gain, even if you don't, you know, per se win, it's, it's a journey of its own. So, um, you know, but only one person on the cover, and that's you. And so I'm really excited. And I want to talk about your business that um, has evolved um, over the years and, um, you know, through business, Next Rising Business Heroine and Business Heroine Academy. Um, but your, let's just start with the name of your business because it's so spicy. Your <laughs> business <laughs> is called Red Hot Soul. So most people wouldn't put those words together in the same sentence. Um, tell us the meaning behind that. Yeah, so the meaning behind that um, is really about just trying to find a place for myself out there in the world and where my spirituality fit. Because growing up, I never felt like I was in alignment with um, the religious beliefs that we were raised for. Sorry, mom and dad. <laughs> uh, and, and I had experiences over my life, as many of us do, where we kind of really start to discover who we are on the inside and really wanting to connect to that and, and grab onto that. So it's almost like inventing your own um, 
your own spiritual relationship with yourself. It is doing that. And, and, and red hot and soul is about blending all parts of you. And some of the truest parts of you are the ones that don't necessarily seem quote unquote soulful. Um, you know, like you said, sassy and spicy, like most people don't think of that as, as soul, but it's really about the fullest expression of who you are and giving you permission to, to be that in your own spiritual development, your personal development, and then taking it into your business. Yeah, absolutely. And I remember we were talking offline about, you know, you, you said you would go to spiritual retreats and, and, and you wanted to put on makeup and still be you, not like give, like not leave you at the door and show up on a mountaintop and have to meditate for five years. Like where is, where is the, the meeting <laughs> of the, you know, the spirituality and the like real life as your personal expression of yourself? Yeah, absolutely. Right. Um, so I've done a lot of personal development retreats, yoga retreats. And I remember being like the only person in there that was in quote unquote, like normal clothes, or I'd be in the community bathroom during silent breakfast and like community bathroom breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> that was like two blending. Oh. Together. No. Um, but I remember like going into silent breakfast and been like wanting to like be expressive. And it was like, no, shut down. I felt like I didn't fit and being in the bathroom and putting on makeup and just getting the vibe that it wasn't okay for me to want to feel comfortable in that way. So, so red hot soul is really about, it's about spirituality for the modern woman, the woman who loves to go out with, you know, go, go and grabbing martinis and going out dancing and still have this really soulful side. So it is that blending. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's great. So you can bring the, the spiritual essence and conversations and like depth, to the everyday thing and you can also bring your spicy spicy sass to the soulful and show us okay. what you are wearing today that we can't right now see on the screen show us your little sass <laughs> my little sass okay so i'm in my home office today and i still have on my little leopard my leopard peep toe uh wedges <laughs> that i've got going on here because even though as ann said you can't you can't see them it made me it just it makes me feel fun and alive and showing up ready to party with you, Anne. Yes, why not? I love it. So um, tell us a little bit more about your journey. Like, what is what has your relationship with your soul been like? And have you always had this intimate connection with spirituality and soul and all of that? No, no, absolutely not. Hell no. Um, spent most of my life like completely living out of my head, not living in my body, um, you know, anxiety up the wazoo, always looking to everyone and everything, knowing, uh, knowing better than me, you know, seeking advice from person to person. And I'd always end up back in the same place. And the same thing was happening in my business. And actually when, um, when Business Heroin Academy had happened earlier this year, it just came at the perfect time because I was going through this like new layer of like, mm, things aren't fitting again. Um, and figuring out like like how to look at the resistances that I was experiencing and go inward and see like what do I really want and so when I think about over the years how that's developed and how I would always live in my head and not and not really ask myself the questions that I needed to ask I remember this one time in particular in yoga class and um, of course it was in yoga right <laughs> And, and being there and feeling super anxious and meditating. And for the first time, I could see my soul. Like, that sounds a little hokey, but I could see, like, the beautiful woman inside of myself that, you know, the outer me thought was never enough, never pretty enough, skinny enough, smart enough, successful enough, whatever it is. And it was that moment that I that I realized, like, oh, all this other these other layers aren't really me. Like, I am actually this, like, pure, beautiful essence mm. inside. And when I got a taste of that, I was, like, totally hooked. And I, and I was like, okay, I have to, you know, like, build this connection with her. I want to get to know this girl. She seems awesome. And um, and she was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Red Hot in there. And that's – I've just had so much wisdom come through in every area of my life by just going back to that woman inside. And it always brings me massive clarity. And so that's what I do now in my business is help other women, you know, who are feeling like they're having commitment issues, as you said, to – themselves and what they really want or to their soul commitment to their soul as I would say and really helping them to listen and stick with that and not heed all this you know the age-old advice that's just not fitting them because mm. you know best yeah 
That's so powerful because I know, you know, when with the whole commitment issues thing, commitment to yourself, commitment to what you really want. And right. there's a little bit of a trust and a belief that that's really there. Or especially if, if for those um, of us who have been living in our heads for far too long and dropping in, what a valuable thing that you're offering to be able to hold that space for us to sink back in and find, find that connection with our soul, with our true essence. And yeah, self. exactly. And it's, yeah, it's more than just like that little bit of trust and belief that needs to happen. It is like all out full on, like the only place that you can feel totally like safe and secure and confident is from that like centered place within. And I always say like the brain and the mind short circuits, everything that's actually happening in between. Cause you're like, Oh, I really want to go take this leap. Like, you know, even with the contest you were talking about, it's like, Oh, I really want to do that. But, uh, there's so many other awesome people on here. I shouldn't do it, whatever. And your mind talks yourself out of things. And really it could be, you know, the very right move for you to do. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's very wise. And I, and I know from a, from a business perspective, I believe for a while you were thinking that like what you really are drawn to do support people with confidence and mindset. It's like, well, that's not a real business. Or you, you were told by experts and gurus, like confidence and mindset doesn't sell. Mm -hmm. So I would love to hear what you've learned from a business perspective to, or, or what you've just discovered from a business perspective, contrary to that, because you've totally bucked that conventional wisdom. What is your take on that? Yeah. Um, so this is just a perfect example of not listening to my to myself, really. Um, that when I started out, I was told, as you know, a lot of people are, are told, and um, that if you want to make, you know, if you want to have an online business, you've got to coach other people in business. It has to be money related. That's the only thing people are going to invest in. And, um, and I did have a coach who, you know, many times over was like, eh, you know, mindset's not going to work or, you know, people don't buy confidence. And I'm internally going, what? Like, how could you not? Like, you can have all the blueprints, you can have all these e-courses and everything, but if you don't have the confidence and the courage within yourself, you're not going anywhere. And so when, when I, and I saw that happen to myself, I needed to prove to myself that, that that was the case. And so I followed the advice and it did work, you know, the, you know, the advice that I'd gotten until it didn't, until I had that, you know, internal crisis of like, this looks great, you know, up here, but down here, I'm not feeling fulfilled. I know that there's more. And as you said in my bio, like my background is in psychology. I have a master's in marriage and family therapy. So my whole like blueprint and design to this point is shifting me towards like looking within and working on relation, relation relational pieces, whether it's a relationship with your business, relationship with your clients or, you know, your body or love, you know, whatever it is. And that was when I really felt like I could start to take off and I could like I had that permission to leave the the other the other stuff behind or I guess not leave behind but integrate it yeah integrate it and I see yeah. that happening it makes me really sad and a lot of the people that I work with they come to me and say oh well you know I worked with a coach or I took a class and they said that I needed to do things this way and then it's totally out of alignment with what they actually yeah. want so they know what they want and they say oh I'm not clear but you are very clear. It's really the work is about getting to the resistances and removing the parts of you that are keeping you from accessing that clarity and freaking going for it. You know, yes. amen, sister. This is I hope that, you know, you tuning in that you're leaning forward right now, because this is some really, really profound wisdom coming out of Marcy Morrow here. Um, because it's true, there are formulas and there are, you know, the template to six figure success in 60 days and, you know, there's all that stuff. And it's not to say that it's not valuable. Like it's definitely, you know, it is valuable. There's, there's stuff there that you can learn from and we need the tangible skills and tools, but that Absolutely. is not what powers your business. That's just like a tool that helps you with, you know, some aspect of your business. If you're not in alignment with what you're doing, you're going to be dragging your heels in and resisting it. Absolutely. I'm like glad said, that it worked that until up. it didn't work. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad that you brought that up, Anne, because this is not to say like, oh, you know, forget all the marketing that you're seeing out there. It's not about that at all because it does work. Right. You know, my coach used to say, just do what I tell you. And it's like, and it, it did work. But then like, what will stop people dead in their tracks if you ask any successful person out there is themselves. Mm -hmm. They say, I could have done this sooner, better, fat, whatever it is. And it's, you know, their own resistances that get in the way. So if you don't have 
um, that relationship with yourself, with your soul, however you want to describe it, then then you will get eventually to that point, if you haven't already, where you're not moving forward in the way that you want to. And that yeah. just means yeah. that there's, you know, resistance to look at. You know, it is that integration for those tangible aspects, but also the the you in your business. Like we're talking to business heroines here and you are, for most of you, you are your business. So if you're not able to show up fully, if you're being blocked, then, you know, how is that impacting things? Yeah, it's like when you're talking with a friend and you're like, they're not really listening to me or they're just like, they're they're fake. Like, you you know, that person where you're like, they're kind of fake. Like, they're really nice on the outside, but there's something yeah. that's just kind of fake. Like, your business yeah. will feel like that if you're not authentic with your business. It feels sort of canned. Like, yeah. and, and it just doesn't work. Like, what works is being real and, like, being connected with it. And And what you're speaking to, too, is you said something like, when you're clear, you are more clear than you think you are. Like your clarity is there. There's just all these layers that are blocking that you from seeing. Ten thousand percent, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. When I, like when I see people, they don't have clarity. It's not a clarity issue. It's a commitment issue. So either they're committing to something outside of themselves and not themselves, and that's you know where those I keep doing this, <laughs> where those where those layers, yeah, really really get blocked. So I believe that. You don't need to go out there and find your confidence or find who you really are. It's about a rediscovery process and an uncovery process. Yeah. And when you can go right to those places and most people want to avoid them. And, and I'm sure we'll be talking about this more. It's like most people want to avoid the uncomfortableness of their resistance and their self-sabotage or the fears and the doubts, thinking it's just going to go away and it just doesn't happen. It's going to keep trying to get your attention until you focus on it. Yes. Yeah. And you know, and as you were speaking, what kind of popped through, I was like, it's kind of about believing yourself too. Like, I think I want this. Well, just believe that, like, believe yourself. Uh, you know, they t there's like this whole thing of belie have belief in yourself. Yep. It just kind of comes down to, to believe yourself. Believe yourself when you are having a moment of clarity or when you're like, I think I want this, but my coach says that doesn't work. It's like, believe yourself. Like, you know. <laughs> yep. Living yeah. proof. Living yeah. proof. Yeah. How about you? Did, did you have an experience like that similarly to where you felt... It's so funny being interviewed in my interview. Um, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just teasing. Um, yeah, plenty, plenty. I, I, I built a whole business um, based on reaction of what I didn't want. Like I thought that um, I, I basically built it because people were wanting certain skills from me because I had developed certain skills, but my passion was never there. I just had gotten good at something I knew how to do. So then designed a whole business around delivering that um, and I, it totally burnt me out is what happened. So it's the difference between, I mean, it's exactly what you said. You nailed it on the head when you said it worked, it did work until it didn't work. You can only do it so long. It's not sustainable. You run out of gas. It's not, you, you, if you're, you're not, any business takes a lot of energy and effort and your, and energy, I should say. It's not, that doesn't have to be struggle, but it takes energy and passion, you know, you have to generate your own passion and sometimes, and so if it's something that you're not passionate about in the first place and you have to generate passion on that, that like morning when it's exactly. raining and you're, you just want to like stay under your covers, it is so hard. If it's like the passion is there and you just have to generate the passion to get out of bed and it's going to be much easier and sustained for the long run. And you're doing it for a reason that's bigger than yourself. And it's not just about, a, it's not just about making money online. It's about serving the world in the way that you uniquely can. Yeah, absolutely. A lot about permission. Yeah. Permission yeah. within yourself. And that's what it is to be a business heroine. And this is why you are the next rising business heroine. You have that business that is heart connected. That's one of the criteria for being chosen was authenticity. Like, are you connected to what you're saying and what you believe in? So, yeah. yeah. So thank you for being a model and an example for all of us. Thank you. So I, speaking of this, um, I know that you love to work with people who look like they've got, to, got it all together, but deep down they know they aren't, they don't really have it all together or they're not really taking the risks that matter. As you say, that's your term. Um, mm -hmm. so how do we know if we're taking the right risks? Yeah. So, so yeah, I absolutely love to work with people who look like they've got, you know, they're, they're not, that they they're not really showing you you know all of that and they know that they're not like there's something within them and that's the point that I had gotten to too I'm like yeah I've got this business and it's going well and I've got clients and all that stuff but it's like you know something's something's just 
off. And I think that people need to realize that alignment isn't a destination point. It's something that evolves over time um, and it's continuing to evolve. So when you um, when you aren't taking risks that matter, and I'll get to how you can tell in just a second, when you aren't taking risks that matter, you feel you feel off course, you feel it internally. And that's going to start showing up in things like if we're talking about business, things like your income or with clients, or you're going to start being snippy with your partner, or you're going to start having body gripes or whatever it is. And that's a cue for you that something's out of alignment. And when something's out of alignment, you're probably not taking risks where they actually matter. When I say the risks that matter, it's not the risks that come from up here. It's the risks that come from in here, the ones that we usually avoid. So the biggest thing that you can do or the biggest like tip that I always tell people um, when I'm working with them to find out where if are they taking the risks that matter is you know if you close your eyes and sit with yourself or I like to journal um, and ask yourself what am I avoiding you know so you can look at what am I avoiding relationally business wise whatever it is you know what am I avoiding and usually not usually always when you ask yourself that the risks that you're not taking the ones that are going to move you further into alignment are, are the ones that you're, as I said, you're, you're not taking. So it goes back to going inward. What am I avoiding? What am I saying yes to when I really mean no? What am I saying no to when I really mean yes? And though, when, it, when you can ask yourself those things, and again, it's not an on paper process. It's how does it feel in your body when you ask yourself those things? That's how you know if you're taking the, the right risks. Mm -hmm. And can you give us an example of this? Like, um you know, maybe taking it to business, business since we're on yeah, business here we'll magazine business. here, let's sure. talk about business. Can you give us Why an not? example of how that relates to like a business decision or a business gripe or a business risk that someone is not taking and where they feel out of alignment? Yeah, absolutely. So I see this happen a lot in regards to niche for people where people get started in a business where in a niche where they they, they're not totally on board with it, but it's like, okay, it makes sense on paper. Yeah, this is going to make me money. And they get to a place where either that stops working for them or they're really successful, but they're not happy. And it's because they didn't actually take the risk to build it from what they wanted to do from the beginning. Okay, wow, wow, woo, first cir full circle back to me, right? <laughs> with the mindset work, doing business, but then, uh, you know, focusing on more on mindset stuff. Mm -hmm. So, so... When like it, it's like the the and again the people who look like they have it all together the people who are kind of like peacocking out there like see I've got this magical amazing business but like inside they know they just got comfortable mm. in their comfort zone mm. and so when you find that you're uncomfortably comfortable then then that's when that's where the 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 exposure the the power the the clients the cash you know all those big words come into to your business when you find that you've gotten comfortably uncomfortable and you decide that you're just going to go for what it is that you really want i think mm -hmm. it sounds it sounds kind of heady but but again like it is going back in process like is this what i want now or maybe mm -hmm. it was something you wanted and now it's just out of alignment for you Mm, I love that. I love the uncomfortably comfortable and comfortably uncomfortable. And um, that's something that I often share with people is to be an entrepreneur, you have to get comfortable with being uncomfortable or, or the only it fear. Suck. Can we just say that it freaking sucks. It's hard. <laughs> it, it's, it's hard to be easy. uncomfortable. Yeah, it is. It's, 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 it's um, the only fear that you need to get over is the fear of fear because there will always be fear when you're stretching yourself and growing and you don't grow without stretching yourself. And so as, as you grow, as your business grows, you grow with your business and business mm -hmm. is just one of the best personal development tools there is. It's just like a mirror, you know? Yeah. Oh, what's going hell on. yeah. We, and we hear that all the time. And yeah. that's like, that's that sweet spot that I like to, to work with people is like when they're up against those upper limit problems, yeah. you know, like they hit that growing edge and they know, oh, I can see my vision so clearly I can almost taste it, but yeah. mm, I just can't get there. Like that's where I come in and let's, let's work through those resistances and boom, if your resistances are gone, as I said before, you have that clear path. From that red hot soul of yours, you have that clear path to clarity, to confidence, to every probably a lot of other c words. Like you know, you have you have that. So it's just about removing the blocks, or not even just removing. It's about freaking detonating them. It's like going right to the core of them and 
like excavating and unearthing it so you can put that resistance in a new role within yourself so it doesn't have to protect you it can actually work for you in other ways because that mm. that's all energy within you and so if you use that energy towards something good it can be really really powerful and unstoppable for you it really mm. can I love it and I just have to presence you know what we talked about earlier about how um guru is telling you you can't make money with mindset. Oh my gosh. How many people watching this video or listening to this right now or know this feeling, the upper limit problem, like, ah, oh, I can see it. And I just, how do I get through? Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's like you're right there, but there's like you're wrapped there. in cellophane. Yeah. Yes. Every, uh, yes. I mean, what you do is what an amazing gift that you do being that person who's right there at that sweet spot to help people usher, usher people through to their real potential. I'm so happy that you believed in yourself and you, and you, you followed you. the authentic path for you. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. And I just have to say, like, as you were reflecting that back to me, like my heart like fluttered a little bit. Like I got really excited. Like, Oh, I love this stuff. <laughs> like, yeah. That is like that. The point where people feel like throwing in the towel is like, no, don't give up yet. Let's do this. Yes. And, and also for those watching, I'm kind of, wit I'm like listening to what you're saying. And I'm also like witnessing this situation. Cause I'm thinking if you're, if you're watching Marcy right now on this video, you can see the passion exude out of her. It's like, you know, when you said your heart fluttered, it's like, you didn't even have to tell us that. Like you can tell in your words or your body language. That's when you, when you're tapped into that in your business, that is what fuels you. Like you can't fake that. You can't make that up. And that is, that's what gets you through those courageous moments because it does take courage and you do need to stretch. It's that when that is stronger than the obstacle, then you're golden. So brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah. Okay. So I love it. And I would love to hear how can the business heroines tuning in, get some Marcy Morrow red hot soul in their lives. You can get a little red hot salt. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> definitely check out my my free gift, and I'm gonna call it. I'll tell you what what it is, but but I'm just for the sake of this is gonna be an evergreen um, video, and I am too damn creative to tell you it's this one thing, and you'll always be able to get it. So if you can be on if you can be on board with that, whatever whatever it is, it's gonna be awesome. That just check out, check things out at my site. But in the meantime, um, so right now what I'm doing, I was thinking really hard. I'm um, launching a new website. And I was thinking, like, what, what, what do my people want now? Like, what, are, what can I offer them? And I tell you what, myself included, and so many people that I did for market research, like, don't give me another ebook, don't give me another video series, like, give me something I can use. And, um, and my coach's colleagues think I'm absolutely crazy, but I decided I'm going to do because I love games. I think I said that earlier. I love games and contests. Obviously, that's why I'm here. Um, but I am get, doing a monthly drawing for my new people who come into my community, my family, my new subscribers um, for a free one hour laser love session with me. So not about love or maybe it will be, but it's basically an ask me anything coaching session um, where you can, I'm going to have a monthly winner drawn pulled the first Monday of the month from all the subscribers from the month before. And it's just going to be drawn at random and, um, That's brilliant. And I'm really, I was, I'm just about to kick this off. So I'm really excited to, to see how this goes, but I thought it would be something that people could actually freaking use. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And this is not like a sideways discovery session or, or whatever it is. Like this is legit, like real deal. Ask me anything you want coaching session. And that's, that's the gift that I want to offer to people. And then of course, when you enter in, you'll get my weekly, um, articles and dares and sometimes I throw a joke or two in there. <laughs> I love it. I love that there's dares. That's so brilliant too. I love that. <laughs> I want a weekly dare. So we will have the link in the article. So be sure to visit that link that's that you see there in the article. Um, and uh, yeah, enter that drawing and get your weekly dares from Marcy and get your red hot soul spicing up. I love it. So Marcy, one last question. I would love to hear from you as our crowned next rising business heroine, what advice do you have for others who become contestants of next rising business heroine and or who join um, business heroine Academy, mm -hmm. which is a six week entrepreneurial training for those who don't know. For those who don't know. Um, and you will know soon. <laughs> yeah. So, so actually it's twofold. I think the first thing that, that I would say in regards to joining is don't, I did this, this is why I'm telling you not to, <laughs> don't read every single response that other people wrote and obsess over 
what you have to say isn't like the right thing or it's not good enough or whatever. Cause, cause you can, pe- we can go really, really quickly into comparison mode. And as much as we all want to be light and love and you know, all that stuff. And like there, and it, even in the, the process and there was a lot of cheerleading that was happening, like, Oh my God, you're so amazing. So it's not to discount any of that. Yeah. But, it, but if you're the type of person who knows that you're being called to something, you know, like this, like the contest or like business heroin Academy, but that you tend to get scared and run away. Don't do that to yourself. Just put your heart into whatever it is that you're sharing with the group and and just show up as fully as you can. Don't take yourself out of the game before it even before it even starts. So that's what I would want to say. Um, and the people who say, oh, I never win anything. I'm not going to bother, you know, because because it may it may be you. So um, I really and just have fun with it. Yeah. <laughs> and and as far as joining Business Heroin Academy, as I said before, it really came in at a perfect time for me where I was like stripping down the latest layers of resistance. Notice I said latest <laughs> um, and and really kind of recalibrating. So there was a lot of people in there who or some of the people in there who were brand new to business. And I had been in business for a few years, but I was I was kind of coming with that beginner's mind and being like, OK, let's let's start fresh and, you know, showing up to all the calls and and like really taking it in from that place of let me hear things in a new way for where I'm at now. So it's not exclusive just to people who are just getting started um, or in the other direction. And I think you did a really great job of bringing guest experts in to talk about, you know, the whole gamut and all the different places where people are at. So. Um, at any stage, I think it's really powerful for you to go through and see, you know, am I in alignment with what I'm bringing out into the world right now? Mm, thank you so much. And yeah. I just have to say, not to mention all of the women who were drawn to Next Rising Business Heroin and the Academy are amazing. It was, oh you know, yeah, like you said, it's, it's a competition. I'm kind of weird. Like, I don't like competition. Right. So it's weird that, you know, I'm like, let's do this competition. I just don't even like that word. But um, it was cheerleading. It was like everybody was like, wow, everyone's like cheering each other on. And it was almost like who won didn't matter because people were getting something for themselves and learning from each other, just even in Next Rising Business Heroin before the Academy even started. You know? Yeah, definitely, definitely. And I want to, and I actually want to recant part of what I said where I said, don't read other people's responses. Um, and I think I, I want to just tweak that and say, do your piece if you're going to enter. Do your piece, and then go back and and give all the love and the and the you know the cheerleading. You know what I mean to to all the to, to the people in there. Like get into the conversation. So don't just don't take yourself out before you yeah. even have the chance because that's probably your pattern. That probably is the risk that you need to take. Yeah. You know the one that scares you the most. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Ah, well, oh my gosh. Thank you, Marcy, so much. What an, a joy this has been to get to know you over the last oh, months and to Fun. put you on the cover of Business Heroin Magazine. It's just been such an awesome ride, hasn't it? Yeah, it's been <laughs> quite a ride and an awesome one at that. Yeah, it's been awesome, and I think you're fabulous and hilarious. <laughs> mm. Well, thank you so much, and thank you, heroines, for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Can't wait. You have been watching Business Heroine TV for the entrepreneur who says she will and does. We hope you enjoyed the show. Be sure to check out what's new at businessheroinemagazine.com today. Well, um, and I think that's all. I think we have everything else from, from you, so... Totally just got my bracelet caught in my hair, by the way. <laughs> that might be our blooper. <laughs> oh like, you can't like, plan that I, stuff. I got my bagel caught in my hair. Really cool. <laughs> what was your first CD? What was my first CD? Oh, was this a tape or a CD? My, my first <laughs> CD was CNC Music Factory. <laughs> By the way, CNC Music Factory just totally brought me back to my Jock Jams, like, edition 12 CD that I had. Okay, so my first CD was Ace of Bass. It was. I commend that choice, and I still love me some Ace of, Ace of Bass. There's, like, some extended mixes of Ace of Bass that are, like, like it's, I feel like it's a hidden gem. I feel like it needs to be rediscovered. It's so good. Dude, I probably still have it. I saw the sign. Rapa!